fight the world's number three lightweight, Al Foreman. Jimmy went on to become Empire Champ and fought tough imports including Ned Tarleton and Wes Ramey. Rugged lightweights Bobby Blay and Bobby Delaney packed them in wherever they fought, staging four memorable bouts. Away from fight nights, fans looked for a more intimate style of entertainment for their partners. Invariably, it could be found on the dance floor at such places as the Palais Royale. No one in those days fought harder than Fred Hennebury or Ron Richards. They met ten times. Richards won six, Hennebury three, and there was one draw. In all, Hennebury was disqualified eight times, five of them against Richards. Hennebury was the hellcat of Sydney Stadium, and always at loggerheads with the big referee, Joe Wallace. Putting it simply, Hennebury couldn't stand him. Perhaps the ref's big girth reminded Fred of the times he went hungry. It was a very lean period, the 30s, going from 1930. It was very, very tough, very tough going. And fellows were fighting to eat and feed about four others, mm -hmm. some of them, including me. Henry, on the left in these pictures with Ambrose Palmer, was a proud fighter who hailed from Port Pirie. At age 20, he became the new Australian middleweight champion. I fought with uh, what we used to call them. He's got a lot of devil in him, sort of thing. That means you get up and have a go. And uh, I gave no quarter. I asked him, so I don't offer any apologies. The big fat man referee didn't like me very much, I don't think, because uh, I was always a goer and they couldn't handle me. They couldn't tell me what to do. Ron Richards was born in Ipswich in 1910, the son of an Aboriginal timber cutter and would become victim of racism all his life. He possessed deadly counter-punching skills and a big right hand. Even in the early days of the Depression, he was earning 100 pounds a fight and by 1932, his reputation was such that he had the first of four bouts against Ambrose Palmer, who was always too big and clever for Richards. The decade also unearthed Jack Carroll, 